You have certainly seen the vertigo effect of dolly zoom in some Hollywood movies like Vertigo, Jaws, Godfellas and many others. The idea is to combine two movements, one pushing in or out from the subject and the other one zooming in or out. The two movements are combined with the aim of maintaining the same sides for the main subject, which will appear as static, while all other elements in the scene will move in an unusual way, creating an unsettling effect in the viewer with a strong emotional impact. It is a spectacular effect is pulled out in the correct way, certainly worth having in your bag of tricks. In this video I will show you not only how to perform this trick, which is actually really easy, but also several little tricks and adjustments to improve your final results. It can be used with hyperlapses, regular videos using a gimbal, and even better with any kind of drones. And you will see that it's also great fun. In the old times for movies, the two movements were achieved mechanically. The camera was actually moving towards or away from the subject, while optically zooming out or in. The DJI Mavic 2 Zoom has a quick shot allowing a version of this dolly zoom, but the result is in very low resolution and we have little control on the final outcome. I much prefer the method that I will show you now. By using keyframes in any video editor, we will not need a real optical zoom and we can also perfectly control the amount and the timing of the zoom. But what we do need is a way to move our point of view. We can use a tripod for a time lapse walking forward or backwards. Or we can do a regular video using a gimbal. But by far the easiest and most flexible way is by using a drone, the perfect dolly in the sky. It is very important to plan the scene in advance. For best results, the subject must be in a different plane from the background. And it is better if there are several elements in the background at different distances. Since we will be zooming in digitally, there will be some loss of resolution. So if you're working with video and we plan to deliver in 1080 Full HD, we need to start by shooting 4K footage. But, well, even the 2.7K of the Manic Mini will do. If you're instead doing a hyperlapse, we will probably have plenty of resolution to play with, even if our final video will be in 4K. Remember that 4K has a resolution of around 8 megapixels, while most cameras have at least 12 megapixel resolution for photo and often much more. This is the first example. I'm using a Mavic 2 and flying very low towards a tiny black church in West Iceland. We have several elements in the background at different distances, a couple of mountains, a few houses, a fjord, the sky, so the effect should work quite well. Also the main subject is very close, which is excellent. You can see that in the second part of the clip the drone is moving upwards, so it will be much easier to cut the clip before that and keep only the part moving parallel to the ground. In most cases I use After Effects, so I will give instruction on how to do it with this software, but any video editor, even the simplest one, will do the job. We will be simply using keyframes and performing extremely basic functions like trimming, zooming and panning. Any editor can very easily perform this task in a very similar way to After Effects. I put my clip into After Effects by pressing Ctrl I and then right clicking on the icon of the file and choosing New Composition. I pressed 0 on the numeric pad to start pre-rendering and we can advance up until the moment when the top of the cross is still in the frame, about here at 48. I then pulled the right tab to the desired point to define the end of the sequence. 
Then I right click on the grey bar and choose Trim Comp to Work Area, so that I can easily access the first and last frames by pressing Home or End. Since the point of view is moving toward this object, we will start by setting the last frame. While if we were moving away from this object, we should start by setting the first frame. We go to the last frame by pressing End. We twirl open the arrow next to our layer and open Transform. Then we can click on the stopwatch next to position and scale, so that we have set a keyframe for each of the two values in the last frame of the sequence. A keyframe stores the value of a specific tool at its position in the timeline. As a really simple example, if we set a keyframe at the end with a scale of 200% and another one at the beginning with a scale at 100%, the image will zoom in in a constant way from 100 to 200 throughout the sequence. As simple as that. We can now pull a few lines to keep track of the dimension and position of our subject. If you don't see this grid around your screen, click on the image to highlight it, then go to the menu View and choose Show Rulers. So I pull lines for the four edges of the church, as I want to replicate the same dimensions. I can then press Home to go to the first frame of the sequence. I move the subject into the box that I have drawn. The easiest way is to scrub over the numeric value for position, but be careful not to use the value for anchor point just above. You can see that we need to zoom in the image to increase the size of the church. Let's try 150%. That was a good guess. We're almost there. Just a touch more. 153% is perfect. After carefully positioning the subject, we can press 0 in the numeric pad to pre-render. And the result is a good vertigo effect, a bit like coming out after a few hours at the pub with friends. But we can probably still improve things by getting closer to the church, and maybe also moving the subject a bit more towards the center of the frame. So I zoom to 120% so that the church and the little white gate fill the image, and I can recenter the church in the frame. I then rearrange my reference lines and I can go back to the first frame, reposition and reframe. And we can see that the result is now more dramatic. Generally speaking, the closer is the subject, the stronger will be the effect. This other image was shot handheld with a gimbal. It will give me the chance to show some extra tricks and some other settings that are often needed. If we set this statue as our target point in the last frame and we move back to the first one to resize as we did before, we can clearly see that there are several issues, the main one due to the big difference in size of the two images. We need a huge amount of zoom and we lose too much resolution. So let's get rid of our keyframes and try to find a better ending and starting point in order to reduce the amount of zoom needed. These two points should be fine, and our sequence will still be 16 seconds long, which is plenty. So as usual, we fix the last and the first point. Note that we cannot fit the same width of our subject if we choose the correct height. This is because I used an ultra wide lens with a big amount of distortion. Also, there is a change in perspective as we get close to the target, but if we just set the correct height, we will be fine. Since the clip was shot with a gimbal, there is a good amount of movement during the sequence, which is part of the handheld look. We can easily improve it by using keyframes. We scroll through our sequence and go to the point where the frame is farther away from our reference lines. We simply reposition the image using the arrows in the keyboard, and the keyframe is automatically applied. 
There are some issues with rotation as well. So we go to the first frame, set a keyframe for rotation and adjust value. The final outcome here is a bit different, because we have not only elements in the background, but also the trees in the foreground interact with the main subject. I like the result. There are two main factors to fine tune uh, the strength of the effect, the distance to the main subject and the speed of the movement towards or away from the subject. Let me show you with this example. This is a good scene for our purpose, with a castle perched on top of a hill, surrounded by mountains and valleys. We're not very close to the subject, and the advancing speed is relatively slow. If we apply the effect with the method we saw before, we get a relatively subtle vertigo effect, which might be what is required for a specific project. But let's see what happens if we increase the speed. I right click on the sequence, choose time stretch and enter 50% in order to double the speed. You can see that now the effect is certainly more evident. If we want to increase it even more, we can go to the last frame, zoom in on our subject, go back to the first frame to adjust dimension and position. And this is the result. As I said at the beginning, it is important to choose a scene with interesting backgrounds and multiple layers. There are some situations that just don't cut the bastard for these effects. In this case, we are approaching the town of Taormina in Sicily, but there is simply not enough depth. Background and foreground are too close to each other. In this lighthouse in Northwest Iceland, there is plenty of space behind the foreground subject. Well, in this case, too much space, as there is only the ocean. So we don't get any real motion in the background. I'm sure you will have great fun experimenting with this effect. It can add an element of surprise to your footage. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye for now.